Hello everyone, and welcome to the first official Installation 01 multiplayer q and I'm Church, Project Lead of Installation 01. And I'm the Chunkier Bean, Project Lead and Founder of Installation 01. Last week, we released a teaser video, showing a little bit of what is to come in terms of content for Installation 01. We also opened up the opportunity for you, the community, to submit questions about the game to our official public Discord server for the team to answer in this video. The devs in our dungeons have been working exceptionally hard to pour over the questions you all submitted, and they've curated a select few for us to talk about today. But first, let's get the basics out of the way. Installation 01 will be a completely free project. It's an artistic tribute to the Halo games, and we'll be releasing it on Mac, Windows, and other PC platforms. We got a lot of very specific questions, like, will Installation 01 have Forge mode? What weapons will be in Installation 01? How many multiplayer maps will be available upon release? While we'd love to take the time to answer each of these questions individually, these are points which will become clearer further along in development. As we approach a release date, questions like this can be answered with a far larger degree of certainty. To kick off the questions, we've got a really good one asking about design principles and how we build assets for the project. How much iteration has gone into the designs for the game? It's pretty clear that assets have been given major changes every reveal of the project thus far. Take it away, Greg. My name is Greg Wasdyke. I'm a modeler and texture man slash sound designer slash overall conceptual design boy. The lines are blurry. Some of us cross them more than others. To answer your question, the iterative process comes down to personal satisfaction. The quality of art in this project has been steadily climbing since it began and continues to do so. It grows as we grow. We get better, we bring in better people, and the art gets better. We're also working towards making our art styles more consistent on a perfection basis. Thanks, Greg. Next question. Will Spartan customization be as diverse as Reach? Awesome question. To answer it, we brought in the man, the myth, the legend himself, animator Matthew Lake. Hello, my name is Matthew Lake, and I'm the animator on Installation 01. For armor, we currently have seven different components that you can customize. This includes the helmet, each shoulder, each forearm and hand, each chest piece and pelvis, and finally each leg set. We currently have two full sets of armor in the game, which are the Mark V and Mark VI, as well as two additional helmets, the ODST and Recon, and we aim to expand with more armor sets in the future. We have three colors for customization, primary, secondary and detail, with the detail customizing your visor color. These are the current systems as of today, though we do plan to expand on this feature in the future with more armor or even attachments, different color masks or skins for each armor set, if that's what the community wants. Okay, on to the next question. So how does the concept art factor into the design of levels and environments? Avixi? I'm Steven, more commonly known as Avix or Avixi around the installation community. Concept art doesn't directly factor into level design, at least not in terms of map balancing and structure. Usually, the layout of the map is blocked out, and once it's tested, we concept artists go in to ideate the visuals to get it past its blocky, unrefined stage. This is done without changing any of the major forms of the map structures, especially around where gameplay actually occurs to avoid possibly messing up map flow. In terms of environment design, the role concept art plays can vary. We have a Forge World type map that is currently being modeled, which was started through many mood concept pieces that I did to establish its visual style. From those concepts, a 2D top-down map layout was generated for the modeler to use in constructing the landmarks and terrain. It is possible to create maps and design environments without it, but concept art forms an essential part of Installation 01's map design workflow. Now joining us to address the next couple of questions, Rhys Godfrey. Hi, uh, I'm Rhys. I'm the project manager on Installation 01 and one of the engineers. Well, our first question about mechanics is, I'm sure your team is well aware of the split in the community because of the different opinions debating whether or not the 3 for 3 games are better, or if the classic Bungie games are. My question is, are you guys aiming for more of the classics or the newer style of gameplay we've come to expect from 3 for 3? Or are you going towards more of the middle ground, combining both aspects for the two sides? Uh, well, I mean, the game is primarily focused around Halo 3. Uh, we talked in the last Vidoc about including some of the more Halo 5 features like Sprint uh, in custom games, but the core of the game we are building to be sort of focused around that Halo 3 core gameplay experience. We are first and foremost building a shooter for PC and so beyond everything else we have to make sure that that feels right, that that aspect of it plays well. Moving on to our next question. Will Installation 01 feature hit scan, infinite velocity, one tick bullets, or limited velocity weapons in the style of Halo 3? Uh, well all of the weapons are projectile based. Uh, basically when we first started Installation 01, all of the weapons were hit-scan, and it made things like the sniper rifle absolutely pinpoint accurate, and it was so easy. Like, you fire a shot, and you kill someone. 
And so we've opted for um, projectile for the weapons. There's still a little bit of balancing and playing around to do, but um, that's that's the direction we're going in for the for the bullets. Will there be a ranking system for Installation 01? Installation 01 will feature both skill-based and linear progression-based ranking systems, akin to those implemented in Reach and Halo 3. Will you be able to unlock armors, level up, unlock accommodations, etc.? There will be several base sets of armor which will be available in the game upon launch, with no unlike criteria. We also plan to have both credit and skill-based unlocks for other armor permutations further along in development. Will this game be on Steam? Glad someone asked this question. I think it's time to introduce our lead web developer and network engineer, The Field Train. Hello, my name is The Field Train, and I've been applying my web design skills to the new website. Not like that joke isn't played out enough already as it is. Want to take the opportunity to insert a shameless plug for the Installation 01 website? We really wanted to bring the classic Halo website experience to Installation 01. We're adding all the things. We, we got blog posts, we got stats, file share, clans, and comments. We're just working on it, trying to make it feel like a home for the community. I think my favorite part right now is that you can actually see the 3D render of your Spartan on your profile. And the best part is you can spin it around 360 degrees. Soon, actually, I'm going to add Spartan customization just straight on the website. So at least while you're waiting for the entire game to come out, you can play around with that. That would be cool. That's a whole game right there. Next question. Will this game have updates of any type? Will there be some sort of launcher? If updates are a thing, how will they be delivered? Manual download through a certain source? Auto updates? Manual update from in-game? This guy likes to ask a lot of questions, but uh, yeah, the, the simple answer is all of the game's updates are just going to go through a launcher. So when a new update's available, the launcher will let you know and you just click the button and voila, it downloads, installs it. The, the only manual download you're ever going to have to do is just the, the first time you download the launcher, and then from there it'll just all be automatic. Will there be an accounts and registration feature to prevent cheaters? Yeah, actually there will. On, on the website, you can sign in with your Google account, which is pretty dope, because for one, we don't even have to store any passwords, so a little extra layer of security there. But also, it sh should at least slightly cut down on the amount of cheaters, since if someone gets banned, they'd have to create an entirely new Google account, which is just sort of a pain in the butt, so hopefully people won't be doing that. You heard it here first from us at Installation 01. If you can trust Google with your information, you can trust us too. Thanks for being here, Field Train. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Alright, we've got two questions left in the video, and we brought on Isaac, another one of our team leads, to help answer them. Hey guys. In the future, do you guys plan to start an indie studio to create other games that are not fan games? And if so, will you start charging money for the games? Good question. Um, I'd say that some of us might end up working together on stuff in the future after this project, but we are really bonded over uh, love for the Halo games and universe, and making Installation Zero One as a tribute. So I don't think we'll see the team as it exists uh, working on anything for profit after this, but um, I can definitely see people from the team going on to do other things. To say the least, the connections that we've made here working on the project are definitely going to last. Yeah. We may see one another working on other projects in the future, but I'm not sure if this team in particular would come together for any other sort of project in the future. Yeah, we're all a bunch of knuckleheads. We just like Halo for some reason, so it just we all kind of mesh together. <laughs> okay, one last question. What inspired you guys to make a Halo fan project? And did you expect it to take this long? Oh man, where do I begin with this one? So as the team's founder, now this was a pet project of mine back in 2013. At the time, Halo Combat Evolved, Halo Custom Edition, and Halo 2 Vista were the only PC Halo games. I don't know if you have to think Spartan Strike came out by then, but uh, you know, those were the only Halo PC games, and I just wanted to do something modern, you know, with a modern engine, um, and kind of replicate Halo 3, because I thought it was the next logical solution. I was just going to say that, you know, I didn't I didn't expect it to take uh, nearly this long, but when I first joined on in, like, August 2014, yeah. I knew that it was going to take a while, and I always assumed, oh, like, two years, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> how, how much longer later? Oh, over two years. Really, I, 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 I do think it's taken longer than I thought it would, but at the same time, I've just been learning a lot and having fun. Um... Like, sometimes I work on this rather than play video games, which I think is healthier. I don't know. Tracking based on other indie and fan game projects, I'd say that we're surprisingly ahead of the curve. Yep. Well, thanks for being here, Isaac. Yeah, thanks, Isaac. Thank you.
Well, there you have it ladies and gentlemen. The first official Installation 01 multiplayer Q&A is a wrap. Follow us on social media and please check out our new website, live right now at installation01.org. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. And we hope to see you back again next time for more from Installation 01. I can't believe how far the team's actually come. I mean, we really have outdone ourselves this time around. I was blown away by what the team was able to uh, produce. The passion and drive that a lot of these individuals have is absolutely remarkable. And the love they have for this Halo universe is, 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 is kind of overwhelming. And there are all these people from all over the world coming together just to produce a fun project in their own time. And uh, it, it's absolutely remarkable. When we were asked to go back to CE3 2016, the last CE3, I knew we had to make it spectacular. Skaldr is one of our latest original maps and it is probably the most beautiful map we've actually made. It just really brings out uh, what Installation 1 can really become and what Unity can actually do. My name is Isaac, I am a 3D modeler for Installation 01 and I've also been working on the level design and terrain editing for Skaldr. I've been applying my 3D skills to the map layout. Skaldr will function as a big team battle map that will host both objective and slayer game types and it could also easily handle multi-team or other playlists that have a large amount of players in them. It has really come a long way. It's probably 
our prettiest map so far, at least in terms of natural scenery. The map has been in progress since around the beginning of the summer in terms of planning, but we uh, made a big content push on the whole map from late June to late July. The Scalder has been a collaborative process between several artists. Specifically, Lucas and I have spearheaded the terrain work and the cliffs. Uh, Lucas has been applying his shader expertise uh, to make the map look beautiful. I've been helping him with the shape of things, and it's been a very fun time working with him, and I look forward to the next map we work on. I'm Reese. I'm one of the programmers and a lead on Installation 01. Art is obviously massively important to creating a well-rounded experience for players, but without code there wouldn't be any experience for the players at all, you know. So the programmers have been working hard since we pushed out the last update to overhaul some of the systems in the game. Networking is currently undergoing massive changes to allow us to do more with the networking and deliver you guys a better, smoother experience and hopefully allow us to have large numbers of players in one multiplayer match. General gameplay code is having to be modified to improve the quality and support the direction we're now going in with Installation 01. Hello, my name is Matthew Lake. I am the animator and rigger on the Installation 01 project. When I did join, we sat down with the leads and the other animators on the team and we kind of devised a plan of action. Uh, we identified where we were, uh, what the previous animators had produced, and where we wanted to be in a month, two months, and so on where we wanted our end goal to be. So we had to look at a lot of the existing technology that we were using inside the engine and what we were doing outside, so such as our pipelines of workflow and how we could speed them up and what we could do to improve or what we could replace. Uh, so we ended up gutting a lot of the systems. Uh, we, we've done completely new rigs for the characters, so both the, the third person Spartan and the, uh, the first person arms have totally new rigs, um, which I created. and. Uh, we have totally new pipelines, we've got people in all different software from um, 3ds Max to Maya to uh, Blender and um, how we blend those uh, workflows together in a single pipeline is, is a challenging feat and it's, it's something we're always kind of dealing with uh, during the production. Hi, I'm Seth, 3D artist for Installation 01. On the team I do hard surface modeling, UV unwrapping and prepare assets to be put in game. I'm also involved with designing weapons where I try to keep a balance between modern and classic styles and design principles. In this process, there can often be a tension or like a question of Bungie versus 343, old versus new, and so on. And to get around this, I try to find a balanced approach that can sort of present a unified view of the Halo universe, which I think is what's most appropriate for our project. After the massive amount of feedback we got from the last trailer, um, we went back and re-evaluated the direction we were moving in um, with the game. After much long discussion, we decided that we were going to be focusing more on a classic experience. Uh, that means that all the maps are going to be designed around a base walking speed with no sprint or thrusters, and smart scope will be removed from the game. Uh, however, the option for players to make use of features like sprint and thrusters will be available in custom games, and we're going to provide users with tools that they need to create maps to suit these playstyles. We don't want to alienate fans of older titles, nor do we want to alienate fans of the newer ones, hence this is the approach that we've decided to take. I have this creative, and I have this vision of what the game is supposed to be, and hopefully I can work with my team to you know, bring it to the fans, to the PC. Something I like to stress with people is that this is a fan game, this is for the fans, by the fans. We know what the community wants because we are part of that community. I mean, I'm really excited just to share this game with people and show people what we've been working on. I'm really excited for the future of the I O M project. Uh, from an animation standpoint, there is still a lot to do. Uh, animations from assassinations, entering vehicles, uh, lots of cool stuff I can't talk about. Uh, but I'm just really excited for the horizons of, of the project and uh, I'm really enjoying myself, really having a blast and there's some really passionate people in the project and yeah, it's an absolute it's wonderful working with people with such drive and such kind of enthusiasm for, for Halo.